Welcome back to Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr Southern. This is part three of the second lesson on reciprocal trig functions and in this video I'm going to be going through a second example uh, of solving an equation using one of the Pythagorean identities, the squaredy swathies. Okay. So here we have solve sec squared 2 theta plus 3 tan squared 2 theta plus 7 sec 2 theta equals 12 uh, and we're going to be doing that in degrees from 0 to 180 degrees um, and you might just like to have a look at the question and think why is the range 0 to 180 not 0 to 360? We'll review that later. Okay so I've got sec squared 2 theta and I've got tan squared 2 theta so we're thinking okay I'm probably using the first of those two identities um, I derived in the previous video uh, which is the identity tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. But am I going to be replacing the sec squared th 2 theta or am I going to be replacing the tan squared 2 theta? Well, the key to knowing that is to actually look at this one here, the sec 2 theta. Because what I want to do with these is I want everything to be in terms of the one that isn't squared. So because the sec 2 theta is not squared, it means that what I want to be doing is swapping the tan squared 2 theta to be in terms of sec. Uh, and that just means I'm going to have to do a slight rearrange of the identity. Rather than tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared, I'm going to be using tan squared theta equals sec squared theta minus 1. So I've just rearranged that identity to allow me to use that in here. So this equation, using that substitution, would become sec squared 2 theta plus 3. Don't forget that 3. Uh, but then sec tan squared, I should say, 2 theta, is going to swap to sec squared 2 theta minus 1. Um, and that's just important here because if you look at this identity, tan squared theta equals sec squared theta minus 1. If I change that theta to 2 theta, it changes this theta to 2 theta. It doesn't change anything about this minus 1. So sec squared 2 theta minus 1 is the replacement for tan squared 2 theta. And the remainder of the equation is unchanged. So 7 sec 2 theta equals 12. And what I'm now going to do is to expand and simplify that um, into a form that I can solve. And you might just like to think, what kind of equation are we going to get from doing this? So, uh, sec squared 2 theta plus 3 sec squared 2 theta minus 3. That's expanding that bracket out. Plus 7 sec 2 theta equals 12. Here I have 4 sec squared 2 theta uh, plus 7 sec 2 theta uh, and then subtracting that 12 I'm going to have minus 15 equals 0. Uh, now students tend to be more comfortable at this stage saying let y equal sec 2 theta. Uh, and that would transform this equation to be 4y squared plus 7y minus 15 equals uh, 0. Uh, and what I'd then be looking to do is to uh, factorise uh, and solve this, um, this equation here. Uh, so. plus 5 in that bracket and minus 3 in that bracket uh, equals 0, uh, which is going to give me two solutions for y. Uh, the first one is y equals 3 over 2, and the other one is y equals negative 5 over 2. Now, remember that it's not y that I'm really interested in, it's sec 2 theta. Uh, so I'm now going to replace that y with sec 2 theta equals negative 3 over 2. And then here sec 2 theta 
equals negative 5 over 2. So two solution sets here, 1 from sec 2 theta equals negative 3 over 2. Uh, but of course, I'm not going to write sec 2 theta. I'm going to write cos 2 theta. And so that is negative 2 thirds. And then for the other one, sec 2 theta, again, I'm going to write cos 2 theta. Uh, and I'm going to say that, that is negative 2 fifths. Two solution sets coming here. So cos inverse of negative 2 thirds. Uh, let's just do that on my calculator. Cos inverse of negative 2 thirds, uh, which is 131.81. Um, now, by this stage, I've done so many cos diagrams that I know that the second solution for cos is 360 minus um, the first one. So I'm just going to dive into that one. 360 minus uh, 131.81, uh, which is 228. 0.18 some decimals. Uh, now, importantly, these values aren't theta, they are 2 theta. Uh, so 2 theta is going to equal 131.81 and 228.18, uh, which means that theta to one decimal place is going to be 65.9. And 114.1. Uh, and now it just remains to solve this one. Uh, so cos inverse of negative 2 fifths. Again, doing that on my calculator. Cos inverse of negative 2 fifths is 113.57. Uh, second solution, as before, 360 minus, uh, which is going to be, what, 2, 4, 5, 6, 4, 4, 2, yeah. So 246.40. Uh, but remember, as over here, that isn't theta, that's 2 theta. Uh, so 2 theta is 113.57 and 246.42. Uh, so dividing each of those by two, uh, I get 123.2 degrees from this one. And 56.7 degrees from this one. And those are my answers for theta to one decimal place. Uh, so four solutions there, two from cos two theta equals negative two thirds, uh, and two from cos two theta equals negative two fifths. I'll just refer you back to what I said at the start of this video. Is why are the limits 0 to 180? Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sutherland, because otherwise we'd have had to go around again uh, and find two more solutions for um, each of them. Uh, it was quite a lot of addi additional work, so it's unlikely that you would be set to find that many solutions, um, hence the restriction of the um, range for theta. Uh, most important point to take away from this video is that when you have two trig functions and both of them are squared and you're trying to decide which identity to use, look for the one that isn't squared and change everything to that. So the fact that it was sec 2 theta on its own not squared meant that we swapped tan squared to be sec squared minus 1. Job done.